I always seem to get sick on work days. I have a weekend immune system. What's going on, YouTube? It is the weekend, so we're inside the Hollow City, inside a cold harbor right here on your map to go over our first of two weekend vendors that we have for ourselves. Now, the reason we talk about these bad boys is for a couple reasons. This is the luxury furnishing vendor. You may want to do one of two things with the luxury furnishing vendor. You may want to throw some of these items in your house, and if that's you, then beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I can only guide you and show you what's on screen. Uh, but if you're looking to resaw some of these items, that's where it could become a little bit interesting. And these items, as you can see, have a bit of a theme to them. If you guessed the Dwemer theme, will you be correct? And these items are a bit unique because they sell uh, for not very much gold, but you don't buy them for very much. So these are actually really cool props to put in your house. 3,500 gold. You can throw essentially a Centurion Blade in your house. You know, I love interactables. I think that they're some of the best selling items, but these ones don't do notoriously well for resell. Uh, but if you're looking for some cool items for yourself, interactable cubes that circle around, can you really go wrong with that? And also to schematic themes. These are probably one of the more popular items that you can get from here because for 8,000 gold, you're getting a really cool kind of item that you can put inside some of your rooms, you know, show like, hey guys, look, I'm like a... 16th century renaissance designer you know i'm a cool guy and you can you know show people your posters who doesn't love that and we have our next vendor here which is in our northern high rock gate and before we jump into them just a quick reminder to like and subscribe we're so close to 25,000 subscribers so if you don't mind hit the subscribe button but now let's see what the golden vendor has for us and we start with an interesting set from eden hollow 2 which is bogdan's which gives you a one piece of max magica and a two-piece of when you heal yourself for an ally, you have a 20% chance to summon a totem for six seconds that heals you and your allies within five meters for 4,046 health every one second. This can occur once every 10 seconds. This is an interesting one. And obviously, we're doing our one to 10 scale here with five being average. So as a heal set, where does this go on the spectrum? And this is a bit difficult because healers usually are trying to do a bunch of different things. Obviously, keeping you alive is pretty paramount uh, to a healer's uh, repertoire. But also, generally, healers are also trying to give out things like buffs, and this is not really a set that does that. It's just pretty much just a straight-up heal. Um, but there are times when you just need to straight-up heal people. I think this is solidly like an 8.5. I think it's in the great tier, but also, too, healers have tons of options that are great, staples, excellent. So don't be surprised if this isn't in the top five best healing sets because... There are better, but when you look at what this does, it's an AoE area, which is great because people are stacked on each other. It's still a great healing set, even if it doesn't rise to the best of the best. Next up is a second monster helmet, which comes from Fungal Grotto 2. As a reminder, you get these anytime you complete the dungeon on veterans. So I would not encourage you to buy either of these. Uh, this one is interesting, though. So it gives you a one piece of stamina and a second piece of when you deal damage with a fully charged heavy attack, you create a web under the target for 10 seconds. That deals 725 poison damage every one second to all enemies within four meters. This can occur once every 10 seconds. Um, this is a very odd set, realistically. There are so many things that you could potentially try to do with this set. None of them are fantastic. I think a heavy attack build is probably the best place to put this in. And I think we would put this probably at like a 6.8, 6.9. Funny number, I know. Uh, because it's not really a good set, it's but it's on the high end of mediocre, which six is mediocre on our little tier list here. So I would say it's it's at the high end of mediocre. Next up, we have Moon Hunter, which I will give you a uh, a free heart on your comment if you can guess where this is from. I'll give you three seconds. It's from Moon Hunter Keep. Sorry, that wasn't technically three seconds. We don't want the watch time to go too long though, but. It gives you a 2, 3, and 4 of weapon and spell, weapon and spell, and crit chance, which is fantastic. And a when your 5 piece set, uh, when your alchemical poison fires, increase your weapon and spell damage by 547 for 8 seconds. That is quite a large amount of weapon and spell damage. And as a lot of Nightblade skills get nerfed, I think that more people need to look at Moon Hunter. I've used Moon Hunter actually on a Poison Sork before. I've used it on a Poison Nightblade before. It's a fantastic set. 
in the sense that it gives you tons of weapon and spell damage, and it's not something that you have to consciously be trying to proc, because if you're using a poison build, this may shock you, but you're constantly firing <laughs> poisons at people, therefore you're constantly getting tons of weapon and spell damage. So from that angle, this is great. Um, I, it's definitely a PvP-oriented set. Usually weapon and spell damage is geared more towards PvP content uh, versus crit, and crit chance is usually geared a little bit more towards PvE content. So where would I put this on a tier list? It's a little bit difficult, but I would put this probably at like a, a 9.0. I think it's excellent in how much weapon and spell damage it gives. I think it's also highly underrated. Not very many people have this set, and I've used this set plenty of times, golded out to a lot of success, but I don't think it's close to a 10. It's definitely not a staple of any sort of PvP build, um, but I do think it's fantastic, and I think it's underappreciated, and I'm not just saying that because I golded out the set, and there's buyer's remorse. I do love this set, and I do still use it. Next up is a very cattywampus set because it is the Ring of the Shadow Dancer from Shadow Dancer's Rainment set. Now, this set is is something else so this i believe comes from green shade and it's two three and four of max mag max mag weapon and spell and then after you leave sneak or invisibility you dodge all incoming attacks for the next one second this can occur once every eight seconds and so you might be thinking to yourself jake what is the use for this set and obviously don't buy this gold it out but funny enough if you wanted to find a reason to use this set, one of the best reasons to use this set is if you wanted to make a harvesting build where you run around and pick up all the resources in the overworld, be a stage four vampire, sprint sneak, and if you have the ability to dodge all incoming attacks for one second, usually if you've got all the you know maxed out, being able to harvest resources quickly perks uh, in your champion points uh, tree, you can do this, exit stealth, nothing's gonna whack you, you'll be able to pick up the items, get them and then run. Uh, thank you, uh, Delane was here for the subscription. I forgot that I have that turned on when I'm recording. Uh, but if you wanted to use this as a resource gatherer build, it's actually one of the best ones you can use. I feel, I mean, you can't, you can't put that on a tier list, but I mean, I guess if you were, you, you give it like a nine because like, yeah, it's, it will help you significantly. You go to Craglore and all the enemies there, you're trying to pick up your potent urn cruxes or whatever. And you're getting a free, basically, invincibility frames for one second. But don't actually buy this set. <laughs> if you really want to make that build, go out and just purchase it. Or just spend like six minutes in green shade and you'll be all good. <laughs> Next up is from the Dread Cellar. It gives you two, three, and four of Magicka, Magicka Recovery, and Weapon and Spell Damage. And when you deal damage with a fully charged heavy attack, you gain an imbued aura for ten seconds. Granting you and up to three other group members, 307 Magicka and Stamina Recovery. This can occur once every 20 seconds. If you deal damage with a fully charged heavy attack with an imbued or active, consume it and gain an overflow for 10 seconds, granting you and up to three of the group members 307 weapon and spell damage. It, it's a very long <laughs> intro, and this is a set that I find interesting because it can give you magic and stamina recovery, and it can give you a bit of weapon and spell damage. And the nice thing is it's an unnamed buff, so this stacks with every other buff that you can get from every other place. So how does this do as a support set? Well, unfortunately, its uptime is not very good. It can be a little bit finicky, and realistically, you know, Magicka and Stamina Recovery for four-man content is not necessarily the most helpful, uh, especially because a lot of the best sets in the game, like Psy, for example, require you to have low Magicka, so usually you, you get really good at kind of maintaining yourself at a low Magicka level it's still perfectly serviceable. I would say it's good. I'd say it's like a 7.5 middle of the road support set. It looks very cool. It's got great visuals, but it's not something that everyone's going to be like, all right, boys, we're putting together a team, right? Who's got the score ions? And they'd be like, what in the world is that? And you'd be like, well, you probably don't know because I just butchered it, but it's that set from the Dread Cellar. And they'd be like, we don't need that, but thank you. Next up is Senshi's Ring, which comes from Reaper's March. Now, this is such a finicky set. So it's two, three, and four, stam recovery, crit chance, and max stamina. And then whenever you successfully dodge, increase your crit critical damage by 15% and your critical healing by 15% for 10 seconds. This is an unnamed buff, and it's just so weird. So I want to like this set, and the developers, obviously, you generally you get a more of a bonus when you proc something, because you have to actually do something to proc, to proc this. But, man, this is just so finicky. This isn't like Clever Alchemist, you know, like when you drink a potion, you gain this one year. Or even like some of the other sets where, you know, we looked at earlier, where it's like, oh, if you just, you know, proc 
an alchemical poison, you gain a bunch of weapon and spell damage. It's just so finicky to kind of, you know, use this set. I think its bonuses are good. I don't know. I guess we'll just give this like a 7.5, middle of the road between good and great. I'm sure that you could weave this into something and be successful with it, but man, this would be a really difficult set to use on the daily. But everyone, thank you guys so much again for watching. And as always, we're doing our three giveaway drawings. All you have to do to enter is leave a comment in the comments below. I do also just want to quickly say uh, thank you for bearing with me. I'm trying to refine these to make these a little bit shorter. But the reason that I um, just you know want to make sure there's a lot of detail is that as we explain the numbering system, I want people to be like, okay, I understand why this is a nine, why this is a six, why this is a seven, etc. Uh, second thing is, is just make sure you're subscribed. We're on the road to 25,000 subscribers. And then the third thing is look for a hidden word we flash upon the screen. If you're the first person to comment that word, you will win. Thank you guys one last time, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. We got some exciting news about the PvP event, and it's Domination Weekend. If you want a good reason to check out Battlegrounds, this is the perfect time to do so, because Domination is a objective-based one, and as long as you don't play it as Team Deathmatch, you'll probably do really well. So thank you guys again, and I'll catch you later. Bye, guys. You better remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Or you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or, better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you.